So, yeah. Uh, thank you, Anand. I think we will kick off this session. Some people are still sort of trickling back in from, uh, from, from outside. Uh, this obviously is the rooftop session. And uh, you know we have a few, uh, few a few rooftop players here uh, represented. I, I think you follow the similar format to what you've been seeing throughout. People, you know, some of us have presentations. We'll sort of make the presentations, uh, maybe a br you know brief comments uh, to follow that, and subsequently, <clears throat> subsequently, then you know we'll open up to Q and A. Uh, so I request the panelists if you could please keep your comments limited to about eight to ten minutes, uh, as in your presentation limited to about eight to ten minutes. Uh, so that we have some time for the audience to ask some questions. So, with that, yeah, I mean, and I also request, let's just keep our cards so that people can know who we are. Okay, so we have uh, Mr. Mishra, Rahul Mishra, uh, who is the CEO of Raise Infra Power. Uh, yeah, since he is on my rightmost, we will kick off this, uh, you know, kick off the session with him. Uh, so, Raul, if you could, uh, if, you, if you think your presentation is ready, could you please uh, sort of take us through it? Thank you. Sure. Thank you. So, small correction. Uh, so, I had uh, Raise Future Energy, which is one of the subsidiaries of Raise Power Infra, uh, focusing on uh, rooftop solar and some of the other businesses that we are starting now. Uh, this is working, right? So just to give you a brief about the company, this we just formed recently. It's a, you know, it's a venture between Raise Power Infra and me. Uh, idea is to focus on rooftop business primarily to begin with, and then diversify into other businesses. Uh, uh, so we are working extensively on uh, electric vehicles and associated infra businesses. Uh, by end of the year, we should be having a few pilots already working on that. And recently, we raised a capital for this fund, uh, for this particular vehicle, which uh, would now look at multiple subsidiaries happening under this company, and this company being the parent company. I think on the rooftop front, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone's aware in terms of government's focus, uh, overall targets that we're looking at, uh, 40,000 megawatts is what we're looking at on the rooftop space, and there's hardly anything that has happened, uh, primarily for various reasons financing not available with most of the players which are there except for few who are already in the space and have raised private equity financing. Uh, lenders now coming to terms in terms of financing rooftop uh, under RESCO model but still there is a vast opportunity available where the financing itself is not there to tap places like the SMEs or the micro industries or retail rooftop for example. And that's where the next phase of growth will happen in rooftop in our view and considering all of that. Uh, you know, what we are looking at, uh, which, which has now created an environment because of government's push towards rooftop, uh, looking at the way utility scale has moved, I think uh, because of net metering, which hopefully will be efficiently rolled out across the states and the time taken to get net metering approval will reduce, a uh, lot of the activities which are around will enable a lot of rooftop expansion happening over the next one, one and a half years across other than the RESCO space. Uh, some of the things that we are working within the rooftop, typical capex model which is an EPC business that comes from the parent which is raised power infra. So that is something we continue with the current cost environment, a lot of the people are comfortable putting in capital themselves, owning the asset themselves and doing uh, projects on their roofs. Uh, OPEX obviously the RESCO model which uh, you know Amplus and CleanMax and other companies are doing which are funded. Now that's something that we also continue to do for the time being. And we are also starting an NBFC, which essentially would be financing rooftop projects for micro and uh, you know, small scale industries, as well as the retail side of it. So idea is to basically provide uh, small scale loans or even consumer loans to individual uh, installers and roll out this as a product across India in terms of that being marketable. People are able to get easy financing within bare minimum time, just like the way you do it when you go and buy your consumer durables or you go and buy your fridge, TV, ACs, whatever. So by end of next month, we should be having our NBFCs rolled out and that's how we start financing and that's one of the key models that we'll be pursuing in terms of solar rooftop. Some of the things which you know, we think should happen uh, is essentially you know, speedening 
the net metering process, uh, most of the states have policies, but there are challenges around the actual implementation of net metering. And at times it has taken three months, four months, five months. Uh, the real implementation of you know, net metered units being paid for, now those are the things which, which will make a big difference. Some of the states have already come with counter policies, um, especially in states like uh, Telangana, I'm sorry, Andhra, where they are looking at reducing the energy charges and increasing the demand charges. Now that doesn't help a lot from people's perspective because they would end up paying the demand charges anyways and the savings that they think they would made or make on open access or through rooftop, that basically reduces and these are counter policies which doesn't help. So those are the places if central government really comes up uh, and intervenes, that, that helps a lot. Maharashtra came with a net metering uh, CES application, doesn't make sense. Uh, the ground infrastructure in terms of, uh, you know, the distribution network where net metering and then if we have a lot of capacities coming up, I think that is one area where a lot of emphasis needs to be put up to strengthen that part of the network. Just like the way for utility scale we are talking of transmission, ultimately distribution side will have to be strengthened from a rooftop perspective. And these are some of the things, uh, you know, which we think uh, are, are important to look at from a next two to three year perspective. That's all. Thank you. That was short and sweet. I think we'll reserve the questions, including uh, my questions uh, or the panel's questions for later. Uh, sort of just go through the presentations first. Uh, so would it be okay for you to uh, present next? Uh, just to, by way of introduction, uh, you know, uh, Ritu represents Ampla Solar, one of the largest rooftop uh, solar developers and rescos in, in, in this space. And, you know, we'll love to hear from her. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, uh, welcome to the session. Uh, just very quickly, uh, kind of differentiate rooftop from the grid scale uh, segment. Most of the work that's happened in the country today is in the grid scale plants. And uh, though we're both using solar technology and pretty much it's the same solar photovoltaic, the industry is almost very different when it comes to the rooftop scale versus the grid scale. Firstly, in terms of size, and even when I'm talking of rooftop, please note I'm only talking of commercial and industrial scale. I am not covering the domestic sector here. Uh, for us, average size is 200 kilowatts, and uh, of late we are seeing that the average size of lots being bid is 200 megawatts in the grid scale plants. In terms of supply, the grid scale plants are feeding directly into the transmission network. The way we've structured the rooftop segment in India, the primary consumption is on site. That's the model which we are perpetuating. Unlike Germany, where everything which is even on a rooftop is being put into the grid. What's great about the rooftop segment versus the grid, obviously you, you get huge economies of scale when you're setting up grid scale plants and large capacities at one point. One of the best things in the rooftop segment there are no transmission losses. There are a few others which I'll just talk about in a bit, but there are absolutely no transmission losses. In terms of challenges on the grid scale, there's land acquisition, power evacuation. Now, both of these challenges have almost been done away in the last two or three bits that we've seen. Land has been provided, and uh, in the Reva bit, I believe evacuation is 400 meters or something from the solar plant. Some of our rooftop sites, we do 400 meters evacuation. So those challenges have got mitigated. In the, on the rooftop side, there are more challenges that are remaining and I'm hoping that, you know, the next time we stand and speak here, some of these will also have been done away with. Customer acquisition is a huge challenge. It takes four to six to eight to 10 to sometimes 15 months from when you start talking to a customer to when they sign up. And of course, the question is of rooftop suitability. You know, we're sitting in a massive hotel. I don't think the roof of this building will have space for more than 50, 100 kilowatts of solar because of the way the roof is laid out. Some other advantages uh, it inter of the rooftop segment, seamless integration, it works with the grid, it works with the DG sets, absolutely captive, generated, produce, produced and consumed immediately. So no losses and in our country we have about, I think 19% is the average loss, includes transmission, theft, wastage, everything. 
it takes maybe just one month to implement even small solar plants give you good amount of savings we only use what is dead commercial space so the roof of a hospital or a hotel or a, or a college uh, the tin roof the, the metal roofs of factories so nothing which has commercial value for the client because these are long term you know uh, projects with very very long term payback you know the life of a solar plant is at least 25 years and anybody people are not very happy committing land so most of the projects happen on the rooftop which is why it's called the rooftop sector the technical term of course is distributed solar for us it doesn't matter whether it's on the ground or on the roof we have technologies that does not disturb the business all of us it's not just my company where it's all non penetrating technology whether it's an rcc roof or if it's a metal shed uh it's a modular kind of a structure today i have set up a 100 kilowatt plant tomorrow if i want to increase this plant to 300 400 500 i can easily do that and you know the you know, possibilities this examples as rcc roof there's a carport on the left the roof was not available so we created a superstructure on the bottom right hand side and the top one it's not very visible but that's a typical industrial metallic shed then we come to that's so much about rooftop we talked about the capex opex so opex is also what the way we work with it is solar energy, solar power as a service model wherein the entire investment is done by us so there is no capital cost or maintenance cost to the user because the entire investment the choice of what module what inverter how to set it up how to design it how to lay it out on a building all of that is mine so there is no risk for the user here so the user may be in the business of making shoes or cars solar is not their area of expertise solar is our area of expertise so we tell them you know you just buy the energy from this plant how this plant is to be made how it is to be sized what technology is to be used leave that to us we are the experts in this area there is a long term price certainty even if it's a 15 20 25 year power purchase agreement the price for the entire period is decided today so obviously we don't have this kind of luxury when we're talking of grid power or even we're talk talking of diesel power the way the ppas are structured we ensure that for every unit of solar consumed there is a saving obviously in states of like maharashtra and delhi where tariff is high grid tariff savings are higher in places like maybe telangana or andhra relatively savings are lower but we ensure that the tariff escalation is structured in a manner that at all points in time solar power is not more expensive than grid power and most of our plants at the end of the ppa term there's a free transfer so if you but you know the minimum life is 25 years after 25 after 20 we've transferred the plant uh on the business challenges very quickly there's very little information even today and unfortunately there's a lot of misinformation coming in from this 3 rupees 2. whatever 4 6 or whatever those numbers are happening now so even if my client wants a 100 or kilowatt or even a 1 megawatt plant they want those numbers and it's very difficult now sometimes i think perhaps the time when they didn't know anything was better than where things are today because expectations are unrealistic uh we these are private ppas so one private party signing with us 20 25 even 15 years is too long a contract time that's something else which places a huge huge uh, hindrance they say we'll sign for 3 years and renew but what happens if you don't renew after 3 years after 3 if 3 years if i have to take my asset off from the rooftop i will lose a lot of money on it the quantum of saving sometimes is very low especially for large conglomerates imagine like you know a 5000 crore company and i'm setting up a 500 kilowatt plant each unit is 2 rupees cheaper than the grid still you know the whole year savings is sometimes 5 lakh 10 lakh 15 lakh rupees so then they get very you know disinterested or you know why i'm tying up for 15 20 years and i'm i'm not even going to take it up to the management if i'm getting annual savings of 6 lakh rupees so percentage per unit may be high but because rooftop sizes are small usually the total savings per year are small so we try and tell them don't look at it as a one year exercise look at it as a savings over a 20 25 year period and see how much you because roof uh, the solar price escalation should be lower than how grid price will escalate in the long run state solar policy sometimes you know as uh, we already talked about in the earlier presentation 
some of them permit some don't some are restrictive some are extremely restrictive and unfriendly and lastly of course there is an inherent risk in this business model which the financiers must have talked about wherein i have put up all the money on day one the asset is on somebody else's premises even access to the uh, asset is basis you know permission from the user and i am depending on regular payments over 20 25 years so we have to choose very very carefully and do a very stringent credit risk assessment and then hope that people will not default and lastly there's a performance risk all of these what generation i'm going to get at a particular spot or a particular rooftop is basis some kind of an assessment of what generation i will get and how well i'll be able to maintain and clean the plant and if these numbers are off by even as little as 5 7% because this number the estimated generation i will get decides how i will price my product how i will charge the tariff from the customer then everything goes for a toss implementation you know let me not go too much into that all rooftop plants we have to do a little bit of optimization in terms of size and layout vis-a-vis uh, -vis the shadow losses that we get so we space them out completely then the capacities are very limited uh, the workforce is still not where we want them to be safety practices understanding all of those norms and we work very very hard with our installation contractors to kind of you know bring them up to speed onm is going to be a huge challenge in this industry you know roofs are scattered all over the country and we need to keep them clean ensure that they generating at their optimum capacity as obviously cost grid robustness today we are limiting you know all the solar policies of the state say up to x percent 20 percent 25 percent 30 percent of substation capacity obviously there's a reason for that so the way we make the grid on the supply side more robust the more solar we can push into it the greatest game changer is not really going to be cost it's going to be storage the cost of storage, the accessibility, the ease of storage and the technology and the size of storage. This is really going to change everything. If you're able to crack storage, fossil fuels are history. In terms of policy, we're telling the government, go on generation versus capacity. Don't just look at what the installed capacity is, see how much kilowatt hours we're getting out of it. Be very careful on what kind of, you know, SOPs and subsidies. Sometimes they don't help and they just spoil the market. Uh, competitive of solar versus grid obviously the entire domestic segment not just because of credit worthiness but it's also the amount of the tariff that is there net metering i'll not go on again uh, we want to tell the government that if you now looking to incentivize and they have started doing this already incentivize the storage because the real growth will come only after we are able to integrate storage along with solar both on the plant side as well as on the grid side and somehow to also finally get the small scale msmes and domestic customers into into the uh, rooftop solar gambit they're completely missing today at least on the opex side they're there on the capex side but completely missing on the opex side something to help enhance their credit you know some kind of financial credit that is there which will give companies like me the comfort that we can work with them and our credit will remain secure with all those challenges is it possible to grow yes we were just founded in 2013 2014 is when we first commissioned our projects 2015 is when we got invested in we got 150 million of equity and we started getting some big ticket contracts five megawatt walmart uh, acquired six megawatts of sun edison's assets uh, then we committed, uh, did a four megawatt uh, solar plant in Bangalore airport, the first one with tracker technology at an airport, where we had to convince them doing an anti-glare study that this will not impact the pilots when they're landing and taking off. And uh, Seki bids. And finally, in March 17, we've also commissioned a 40 megawatt open access project. So we were at about 30 megawatts or so in 2016 and we've grown to over 100, we're about 117 today. And so this kind of tells you that with all the challenges and issues that are there, this sector is viable, commercially it makes sense. I know it's early days yet, but the model works. I'll not go into this in detail. Thank you so much.
No, th thank you too for a uh, wonderful comparison and some of the you know some of the classic problems that are faced by uh, you know in fact in this case by one of the incumbents uh, you know and the leaders of this particular space. Uh, you know, some of the problems represented were classic, and uh, but I think the comment at the end was very telling, kind of c compared to our situation here. Rooftop appears to be small, and as we have seen in the example of, say, Solar City in the US and the likes of few of us who, say, lead the business uh, in India, they, it appears to be small, but it very quickly catches up and grows. Kind of like the panel here, we started with two or three, but you can see now the entire stage is full. So that, I mean, that's rooftop for you. Uh, with that, actually, so we've heard from somewhat of a uh, first mover uh, sort of approach from Rahul. We've heard from one of the leading incumbents, but a very happy new entrant, at least what a new entrant that makes all of us very happy into this entire space is a lender and in fact, the largest project finance lender in the world at that, and that's SBI. Uh, I'd like to invite, uh, you know, Mr. Kumar, Deepa Kumar to, uh, you know, just share his thoughts and what got them comfortable with some of the risks that, you know, Ritu obviously listed out very diligently. And yet we have a lender like SBI as a part of this, uh, this story. So, sir, please, your comments. Uh, thank you, Anurath. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I joined uh, this uh, seminar today itself at, uh, in the second session when Mr. Sekhar Dutt was uh, talking about COP21 and all that. So I was just wondering, see, this group is of uh, technical experts already engrossed in solar power technology and developers and everyone. As a lender, what should I talk to you? I would like to give you lender's perspective, how I'm lo looking at this segment as per se. When Mr. Sekhar Dutt and it was also, also, also touched by Mr. Vipin Tyagi who spoke at the end, sustainability aspect of solar power for which every financial institution today is committed to. We have to look at sustainable future, sustainability of our resources. Coal is not going to last forever. So we have to look for alternative energy and in that context, renewable energy is one source that is coming from nature, God gifted, we must use that. And bankers or lenders has to come forward to support that activity. Any lender, SBI being the largest bank, is there to support that, support this activity. Government of India has committed in Paris, they are going to install 175 gigawatt of renewable energy. Out of the 100 gigawatt is coming from solar. And out of that 100 gigawatt, 40 gigawatts, they are aspiring to come from rooftop. Rooftop and solar energy look same, but if you look as, as Ritu was telling, it's a different ballgame. Rooftop is not exactly the same as solar energy, solar power. It is something like we are talking about large corporates on the one hand and SME units on the other hand. Not the same. Activities are same, everyone is manufacturing, but SME and large corporates cannot be compared at one <coughs> platform. Resilience capacity to sustain losses of the promoters or those who are installing rooftop is not same as large corporates. Anything going wrong, their losses will pinch more to them. They may not sustain it. And so the risk, element of risk or quality of risk in rooftop is totally different. Most of you here are associated with powers. Just, uh, I'm trying to, uh, you, I'm telling you to visualize your experience when you approached your bankers, what type of questions they asked and what of sort of apprehensions they had. Naturally, everything has been discussed in the last two days. I, am, I have seen the program agenda. Technology aspects, doubts on uh, longevity of uh, solar panels, longevity of the units that is and then that will use that power those things those risks are there but still we are trying to promote i was just think, thinking if i'm using driving a car for the last three years which is giving me 10 kilometers average per 
10, 10 kilometers per liter I am getting an average and someone comes and suggests me why don't you buy a nano also use it for 300 kilometers save on petrol it will return you the cost of nano in n number of years three years five years seven years what will be my reaction that is exactly the reaction I get from SME when we talk to them why don't you use solar panels in your factory site working manufacturing site and save on the energy costs and the answer is that is not my core activity why should I invest in solar rooftop where I am to invest money which I could have used more profitably in my existing venture on which I am expert energy generation is not my core area so if I am putting money in, in some activity which I don't know I am relying on someone else I am incurring additional risk and I don't know whether the return or saving that I will make will give me more profit or profitability than what I am earning in the existing my existing core activity why should I install then we say okay you don't install but you can use third party agencies which, who are developing solar power for you they will give you cheaper power and you can sustain that may appeal to them so but from lenders perspective I am more comfortable in financing capex model because I know the unit I know their profitability I know their activity I know the promoters so I'm more confident on the promoters on which I am lending so for a lender capex model is always desirable mode of model on which I would like to finance but the, on the other side my promoters may not be very keen to accept alternative way of generation of powers so, and they are looking for third party activities where most of the developers come in and they are installing solar powers at their rooftops giving them power using their rooftops installing their equipments and giving them power at a cost cheaper cost but there what are the risks I am incurring I don't know the third party first third party may be very effective very financially strong but do I get enough assurance that I am going to get assured cash flow over the next 10 or 15 years till my loan, loan, loan book runs any banker is interested in the assured cash flow for the period his loan book runs from where I am getting the cash flow are the PPAs strong enough which guarantees me assured cash flow for the next few years till my loan, pay, loan, loan is getting, pay, paid back in today's scenario till date I have not seen any uniformity in PPAs which can assure me guaranteed cash flow what could be the other alternative ideally discoms should have owned it because discoms are the ultimate users of your power whatever net metering policy you surplus that you are generating it is going to discounts and customer do, whom, who is paying to you is by saving money from the discount he is not going, going to the discount and paying you so ultimate ownership ideally in ideal scenario should have been for the discount to the discounts to own up this project and implement it in the country but all of us know there in today's scenario possibly their capability to own up this type of or this size of project is maybe questionable I would say all discounts may not be on the same footing or same strength that they support it so from where I get the comfort that is the question actually especially in the scenario where rates are coming down one bid was at uh, 6 rupees, another was at 5 rupees, then 4 rupees, then 3 rupees, 297, 244, the <laughs> man was telling, 244. So from where this cost reduction is coming and whether this cost reduction is going to raise some unknown risks in coming time, that I'm not very sure of. And this is such a new activity that those who are involved in this, they are also not masters in this game. They are also new and experimenting and relying on someone else. 